I've got a new stencil. <laughs> Here's my stencil after having used it. <laughs> you can really see the pattern once you put some paint on it. And here are my little cards, which I made out of cardstock that I tore with a ruler. So they'd have a bit of a rough edge. Are they perfect? Nope. If you are trying to embrace imperfection, but would really like your ATCs to be a little less imperfect, try this. And don't worry. Be happy. Perfection will continue to be out of reach. <laughs> a metal-tipped squeeze bottle is what comes to our rescue. I like to use gesso. That tip allows me to do all kinds of things on the ATC cards. I can fix lines. I can change lines. I can add lines whatever I like. Drawing on the designs, adding your own marks, helps to put your mark on these designs. Make them more your own. You have seen me using white, but I can use any colors I want, including black. I just have to let the layers dry in between. I decided to turn ATCs into openable cards. I used a ruler to cut out the cards out of cardstock. Then I gessoed them on both sides because I like the feel of gesso. I love the tooth that it has. I stenciled onto those cards and then pulled the same trick with the metal tipped squeeze bottle, just playing with the designs. Once I had made the cards, I wanted envelopes for them. Creating envelopes for my cards was such fun. I started with a purchased envelope of the right size, opened it up, and traced around it to make a pattern. I scanned the envelope pattern, now making sure it was the right size to print out, then printed out nine copies to use for the cards I had created using my ATC stencil. I cut the nine envelopes out, then gessoed them front and back. They were now ready to take to my jelly arts plate. But I'm jumping ahead of myself. Next, I will show you how I printed some of the envelopes you see here. These envelopes are gessoed, both sides, ready for the jelly plate. I'm sticking with my black and white theme, so I've just put on some acrylic paint. That was just a little blob in the middle I somehow felt I had to point out. <laughs> you can make any kind of marks you want onto the jelly plate. Everything shows. It's quite wonderful that way. And then I just started playing. I do a lot of playing. At first I rubbed with my fingers. And when I pull it up, I would get edges that hadn't touched the paint, which is okay. Here I'm spraying with water. That gives you a surprise, surprise, watery look. Don't think you have to settle for whatever comes off the plate. You can scratch into it. You can paint into it. You can do all kinds of things on the side. 
which I really enjoy doing. I even take paint off of the jelly plate to use on the side. Just adds more marks. Here I finally use a brayer to press the envelope onto the jelly plate. It works really well, just a little harder to pull off again. Once the envelopes are all painted and dried, I need to glue them together. Here I made the mistake of putting glue on the tip. I don't need it there. On subsequent ones, I did not do that. Because you can see there's a bit of a gap. So don't make the mistake that I did. I wipe off the excess glue, including the glue on that tip. Make sure everything's pressed down. And slide my card in. It fits perfectly. True to form, another idea pops into my head. And I decide to add a little bit of silver with my Karen Dash Neo Colors, just for a bit of sparkle. They're water soluble, so I color them on, enjoying that silver on the black and white. And here I'm using a water brush to spread the silver around a little. Add that nimbus of light around the star. And let's get that moon all silvery too. It's more of a gradation than adding another color because the silver actually reads gray. Gray with a bit of sparkle. <laughs> Let's put a good footing on that ladder. Ground it so we can climb more safely all the way to the moon. I add silver touches to my other cards. In comes a squeeze bottle again, and I add a few more details. You just keep going back and forth, back and forth, with any kind of art material that you enjoy using.
You keep going until you feel satisfied with your result. The cards were finished, for real this time. I had my envelopes, but needed them to stay closed. This was where stickers came in. Once my envelopes were made, I created some stickers for closing them at the back. Stickers are easier than using wax and a seal stamp. I drew circles the size I wanted my stickers to be in my favorite drawing program and added the crow symbol to them. You can add a favorite symbol to yours if you wish. Simply use your initials or play with whatever strikes your fancy. My artist's name is Costruck. It consists of my initials and the fact that life is always showing me magnificent art and people that leave me feeling awestruck. And because my initials are the call of a favorite bird, a bird that is very resourceful and intelligent, the crow is my symbol. Notice its wings are widespread. Creativity helps us soar. To turn my printed page of symbols into stickers, I followed this recipe. This recipe will be included as a PDF at the end. Don't you think that seal adds just the right personal touch to the outside of the envelope?